arrived at the orchard campsite about 3.30 in the afternoon and got straight to work setting camp up. We were tired after our long trip up from Albury. We will talk all about camping in a future right, so video. A little bit of an update. We are at the orchard. We came in over that way and you basically just drive up and down looking for numbers which have been painted on about a week ago and have been grown over with grass. So as you make your way around, you have all these lovely friendly people in all these other vans. And as you drive up and down the street, you go, what number are you, mate? And they go, one, six, eight, seven. You think, well, I'm 1700, so I've got a bit of way to go. And that's how it kind of works. You rely on the others around. But have a look at what they, how they've painted these numbers on. There's one that's a little bit easier to see. So that's 1699. And then they have these white lines. There's one just near Jeff's car there, which kind of indicate your markers. So. This is us here, and our number on the opposite side of this bin, here it is. There we go, 1700 is us. We've got the car and the van, so the car's right on the white line, the van is here, and then our end of our white line is here. And we've managed to fit in the car, the AV and the annex, and part of the pergola that Corinne and Ange brought. And this is their part. They've only taken up this much space. They could have gone a little bit further, but they let this couple here beside have a spot for their car. This is the campsite. We've been smashing it out, getting it set up. Got the fire pit, chairs, did some decorations. Ange's been busy wrapping the poles in rep K tape. We've got they've been here all set up ready to go we've got the toilet area here which has just been set up and over this way we've got our annex it's meant to be raining a little bit later this week so we've got the tarp down so that we don't get wet feet and obviously the van which you can see it's in various stages of getting prepared but um we're away and you know what the best thing is Sight is that you walk around this way and I'll just spin you around <laughs> but um there she is Mount Panorama so we'll be able to see the cars going over Skyline the chase I'm gonna go for a little bit of walk a walk later and check out what's happening around um yeah around the campsite but it's looking good I reckon it was just under a kilometer to walk to the track you're able to walk on the track at different times throughout the weekend. Wave, Jeff. Obviously, this all stops once <laughs> practice starts, and that's usually in, later in the week. From around Wednesday on, uh, the track is open intermittently for traffic. And by traffic, I mean campers and people who actually live or are staying on the mountain. Mount Panorama Racetrack is unique in that it is a public road outside of the race event. And as an avid race follower, it's pretty special that you get to walk it. If we weren't already stuffed, um, we've managed to get ourselves on the track, as you'll be able to see. <laughs> the boys are already talking about doing a hot lap on foot. I don't know that I'll be joining them for that one. I've already hit Our walk this afternoon took us along Pit Straight. We walked all the way to the other end, checking out some of the pits along the way before turning around and coming back. We got to walk the finish line, see the podium, and work out some good places that we might be able to sit to watch all the action. They were doing a few sound checks this afternoon, so I took full advantage of that, of course. <laughs> and after what seemed like a marathon of a day of driving and setting up camp, it was time to head back to camp now grab some dinner, rest up, and get ready for the best weekend of the year. It was a little rainy the next day. We knew it was, that's why we got there a day early to set up camp. But this didn't stop us, there's plenty to see and do around the track, even if it was wet. And one of those is the Motor Museum. And I suggest everyone call in and check this out. If you're looking for merchandise or around um, from Mount Panorama, this is a good place to go to get it to we found that the prices were really reasonable. I remember visiting this racing museum around 23 years ago and I can tell you that the collection has grown considerably since then. 
We really enjoyed our time here in the museum checking out all of the old vehicles and the history of Bathurst. We're out here braving it for the um, transponder parade. It's going to come through the main street of Bathurst very shortly. Another 15 minutes. I'm not going to show you all the transponder vehicles coming through. I do have that in a separate video on the channel so you can check that out. The weather certainly didn't deter anyone from coming along to enjoy the parade. It was great to see the people of Bathurst out there supporting such a great event. Being Bathurst rookies, we thought we had a great spot and we did to watch the transponders. But it wasn't until a bit later we noticed this guy starting to put the fence across the road and realised, uh-oh, the drivers are going to make a right turn here, aren't they? And they did. We only saw glimpses of them from a distance, so sorry everyone. So that was the transponder parade. And after that, the drivers did come through. A couple of them were out on their cars with their umbrellas. But uh, most of them were inside. And then they went down the, the street here, which is where the crowd's headed. Jeff and Ange and Corey are in there at the moment. I don't know what they're getting up to. I'll just see if I can get this. That's better. There we go. Yeah, it's um, starting to rain steadily here, but we were expecting that because that's what the weather report said. So the drivers go around and then they do some sign off and it looks like there's going to be about a million people there. We're probably going to just go for a wander downtown, get back in the car and head back. Because even though we saw the drivers from a distance, you get to see them at the back of the pits through most of the, um, the race day anyway. So hopefully we'll see some of them then and get some autographs. I'm just going to wait for the guys to turn up. I ended up finding Jeff just at the right time. And after a snack and a bit of a wander, we headed back to this place. Oh my goodness. That's one side. This is the other. This is the bottle shop to come to. <laughs> They're stocked up. Yeah, look at the bloody crap. And if there's any confusion about what you can and can't bring into the Bathurst campsite, there's a sign at the entry that'll let you know. And there were people who had to surrender alcohol after being to the bottle shop, so make sure you know what the rules are, guys. And it's probably only here in Australia, or even Mount Panorama indeed, that you'll see a sign that bans you from having one of these. For now, we were back at camp and settling in for the afternoon. We had arrived on Tuesday, today was Wednesday, and the camp was still looking a little empty. I can tell you now, it's a long way to the amenities block when there's a river running past your campsite. <laughs> it's all looking a bit miserable, but really, we're, we're dry, we're happy. We've been in and out of town twice to get our one carton per person per day. Um, quota <laughs> and it's going very nicely I must say and, um, this is going to get really heavy as the this is going to get much heavier I believe as the day goes on and we just got to put up with it we're all snug in the annex we got the <laughs> Set out. We will survive. <laughs> we will survive Bathurst, won't we, Jeff? We're surviving Bathurst, it's good fun. It is. 
We spent the rest of our day lounging around, watching TV, drinking and listening to music, which wasn't all that bad, to be honest. If you are enjoying this series or our other videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Until then, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.